welcome to the Transition Podcast, Angel. So glad to be here. I'm a big fan of it. Oh, thank We've you, man. We've been talking about it for a little bit now, so thank you for having me. No, thank you for thank you for coming. And and one of the things that I've always I always say is like. This was your time to be here. You know, I know we've been discussing it for, for quite some time, but it seems like January 8th is when uh, when Angel Nicholas was supposed to be on the podcast. So I'm, I'm happy to have you, man. Thank you. Um, and how I worked out was, you know, let's, can you do it tomorrow? Let's do it 10.30 let's do it. and it just, and let's that, go. That's usually how it works, man. <laughs> Last minute deals, right? Right, right, right. But uh, no, going back to what you and I were talking about before was before we started, you know, the the uh, quote unquote uh, original, original podcast, right? Um was my trend so that the point of the transition was to really reach out to ex-athletes and that it's in my nature to talk about ex-athletes but we're all in transition right we're right. all transition in our life but but yes i'm more attracted to athletes and that that's how how what what i've what i grew up doing and, and what i understand the most and what i'm attracted to um but the podcast uh, came to birth because my transition was tough right and during that season of my life, not really understanding what I was going to do in my life, where I was going, losing the structure angel of, you know, waking up at 5 a.m. And, and, and getting my lift in, getting my, my, my meal in, going to class or, you know, in the minor leagues. The, the whole routine that you and I uh, were used to, when the rug was pulled from underneath my feet, it was, it was scary. So that's how this whole thing started. I, I started to, to read up a lot on uh, athletes, on psychology. Um, and I started to see a trend where a lot of athletes who stop playing sports uh, go through phases of, we can call it, you know, emotional challenges, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, anxiety, some depression. Uh, there's a name for it. I just look at it as an emotional challenge because mm -hmm. you got to kind of figure the whole thing out again. Right. Um, but anyhow, you, you are, you kind of remind me. Of myself, man, I, 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 like, I don't know if you know this, Johnny, but I, I met Angel. I used to, I trained Angel for a little bit when yeah, he was a shortstop you, you, at Kenyon High School. You coached me. I coached yes. him, man. And we spent some times in, in the, uh, in, in the Killian weight room and, 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 and little that, and now you're, you know, we're both grown men and, and you reflect almost kind of, we have, we have similar stories. Very I, I, similar stories. I, I stopped playing baseball. I went into what I do best, right? I, I know baseball. So let me train kids. Let me get into, uh, let me do some strength and conditioning for, 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 for kids and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, but deep down inside, I wanted something else different in my life. I just didn't know where I was going. And I kind of saw that happen to you, man. So I'm just interested to see an angel Nicholas and, and his story. So, um, tell us a little bit about you where you went to school, where you were born, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there, man. Yes, well, before I get into my story, I just wanted to touch in to your story. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of what you have created here. This, What an amazing office and a, an amazing business that you have created. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm proud of, of everything you've done, man. It's uh, Awesome. It's inspiring, and it's great to see it. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So uh, going back to my story, very similar to yours, you know, we had a dream of making it to the big leagues. That's all we thought about. That's we worked extremely hard to do it. Uh, grateful that we both were able to play professional, Baseball. not at the highest level, but we were professional. Not many people can say that. So grateful about that. Um, but fast forward to the end now of, of my career, right? In mm -hmm. 2010, I want to say, um, in the grind, the minor league baseball, get traded to a team, didn't pass the physical because I had a labrum tear. And I ended up in New York. Thank God my brother was living in there in New York. Shout out to my brother, Cesar, Nic Cesar Nicholas. Yeah. And um, I'm super depressed. What am I going to do with my life? I'm in the middle of the season. I was going to go, about to go come back to Miami from New York. And, and I didn't want to go back. You know, all my friends are out playing baseball. Mm -hmm. People are going to be, what are you doing here? It's the middle of the season. So my brother says, why don't you just stay here, you know, for a few weeks and, and figure it out and, you know, have some, put some thought into what you want to do next and, you know, hang out here. So I'm sleeping in my brother's couch and one week turns into two and two weeks turns into four months and four months turns into a year. And to the point that we end up getting another apartment together and I lived in New York for two and a half years. I'm not sure if you know that story. No, I didn't know that. But, um... 
my brother gives me a book. He sees me on the press and the book is in the pursuit of a happiness. Take that back in the pursuit of excellence. And in the book, there was a question and it says, what do you really like to do? And the way that it, it was, it was, the question was put in a way, you know, more specific than this. In the pursuit of excellence. Yes. And it was a lot about athletes and how they either got injured and made a comeback or technically what you're doing right now, trans transition to other things. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it took me like a week to really write, like, what do I really love to do? Right. Cause well, you know, I love to play baseball. I like to do this, but like, no, like really what deep, deep, deep inside, what do you really are? What, what are you really passionate about? So it took me about a week to really answer it. And, and when I came to down be honest to with yourself, yeah, to really be honest with myself and, it was a lot more than, oh, I like to play video games and things like that. It came down to, I am really passionate, as cheesy as it may sound to some people, uh, about helping others, right? Just assisting others. I'm passionate about it. You know, I, um, seeing someone else grow because I was able to assist them or not, um, I'm passionate about it, you know? So um, at the time, I said, well, what can I do that I can help others through my expertise at the time, it was personal training because I went to school for exercise science. You know, I was in the sports industry. And um, so that was, that's just my make sense to me. It's probably how you fell into it as well. It, it, it almost come, it, it came natural. Right. You were coachable, you knew how to coach, you knew how to take instruction. And being on the field, there's like being a teammate, man, and, and, and seeing other people grow is in some of our natures. I don't know that every athlete is like that, but I, but I, get, I get you 100%. Right. Right. So um, my brother was a personal training manager at Equinox at the time. So I started working at Equinox and... In New York. In New York. Okay. Uh, got really into it. You know, obviously, you know, kind of like the background baseball, you want to be the best at what you do. So all into it and quickly became one of the top trainers in New York um, after about a year and a half there try to make a comeback in the baseball thing because it was still lingering around. I did it. I played uh, independent baseball in Mexico. What was that like? It was fun. It was fun. But I, during that process, I started to realize that, and I'm so grateful that I did it because you know, if not, I would have been like, oh, I could have, I could have, I could have. So I actually tried it. And throughout that process, playing in Mexico as a bunch of veterans, some of them guys have played in the big leagues. And I saw their lifestyle and I said, you know what? That's not what I want for myself. And I, and I, I had a, an epiphany there that I was, you know what? It's time for me to move on to the next thing. And that was your closure. I, I am not just a baseball player. I'm much more than a baseball player, you know? And I could add value to the world in many different ways than just playing baseball. And even if I would have made it to the big leagues, you know, what, play three, five, 10, 20 years, you have to do something else after, right? So, um, after that season, I was, you know what, I'm ready to move on. And I moved to Miami, started a personal training company called Quality Fitness, which is still going on. And my good friend, Nelson and Labrada is running it. Okay. And uh, thankfully, it's doing great. So you still have that? Still have that. And, you know, technically, it's, it's like I, I accomplished what I wanted, which is helping people through health and fitness. And now Nas and other trainers are taking that on. And we're still helping people through through health and fitness, which is great. Um, fast forward now, I meet my wife, baby on the way, and now I want to grow. Now, now, how can I help people in 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 a in a bigger space, you know, or at a higher level? I will say. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always liked real estate. Always gravitated towards real estate, and. Um, in the process of finding a location for a gym, I got my real estate license. That and was smart. Yes. And um, technically, well, I had a great mentor when I got my license. Uh, shout out to Irvin Padron. And he told me, you want to do this, you got to set up the meetings. And I did and got a listing and just fell in love with that psychology of selling the emotional of selling residential real estate. And it's been six years now, and I am laser focused on on my real estate business. Well, I see that, and I see how much you've grown, and and how you're 
you're passionate about what you do. And I see you that, you know, you came in here with, with a phone in, in, in your ear and, you know, and you, you, you exude passion in what you're doing. And I think, I think that's, I think that's one of the things that passion can take you so far sometimes in life and people underestimate it. Like you can be the smartest guy in the room, but if you don't have the passion to do what you're doing, you're not going to maximize your potential. And I've always like, when I got into insurance, like I didn't know anything about insurance. I didn't, I didn't go to school for risk management. Um, I ended up in, let me, let me tell you this, how crazy this is. I ended up in insurance because I'm throwing batting practice at Killian High School. No way. To a young kid whose father was a State Farm agent, Carlos Lewis. And Carlos Lewis told me, Fern, if you put the same passion you have into this, into insurance, I think one day you can be very successful in business. And that was my answer to how I got into insurance, but it also happened at Canadian High School. That is cool, man. So I would train I you guys, and then after I was trained in the batting cage, and I would just get, you know, uh, Coach Angel back then would let me just use yes. the, uh, the batting cage, and I would throw BP to kids, and that's how it, ha how it happened. Wow. But So it's, it's funny you said that because now I'm taking my real estate license, right? And I had a great teacher, and uh, I remember telling myself that, it was like, wow, if I put the same passion that I have into fitness, helping people through fitness into the real estate world, I can see myself growing and growing fast. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I wanted, and I, you, you know, as, as, as a ball player, and as, as you start to grow in life, you realize that I wanted to also financially grow. I wanted to grow financially. And I was, and I was like, man, like, I want to get into business to make money. I might be, I, mean, I don't want to get into business to lose money or, right. or, or not to make money. But what, but I wanted to collaborate passion with, I, 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 the way I looked at it was like a hitter, right? Like, okay, I'm going to get into a new sport. My sport's going to be called now insurance, but I'm going to have to go to T-ball, coach pitch, kid pitch, high school, college, minor league, big leagues. I'm going to have to go through the same steps. I'm still have to do it all over again. But the the game had prepared me to exceed that, to make it that much kind of, I don't want to say it was faster for me, but I was I was prepared, Angel. You understand? We, we, we knew that failing was going to be a part of the process. Right. Getting your ass kicked is going to be a part of the process. But if you can stick to it, you're going to start winning a lot. And, 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 and it, I just, there, to me, like, it's crazy because like, there is no difference between a sport and business at all, man. It takes passion, character, discipline, integrity, do the right thing, man. Return a phone call, look at somebody in the eye, be a good person, mm -hmm. be honest. You're going to win. And the irony of life is that when I got into the insurance business and I started to, to kind of study my competition, right? I, I mean, the way I look at competition is like, I don't, you know, if I'm going to face a fight in a guy, I want to know what he throws. Right. Right. I don't want to go to bat and just react. Not knowing anything. I want to have a plan. And plan, we all pivot from that. But I started to realize how soft, and, and, and I, mean, I don't mean this in a bad way or arrogant, but I know that I can get my ass kicked and I'm going to get back in the ring with you. And I started to realize how, how I could just come at people hard and break them. Yes. And I, don't, and, and, and I think that's a healthy competition, but like, you, you know, you're bidding on your multifamily assets against me, I'm going to war against you. Right. And, and I want to win, I want to earn my client's trust. So I'm going to do everything I can within my power to earn that deal through trust, to doing the right thing, to being smart. And I realized that we have been put so much in pressure situations that it's natural. I almost crave it. Yes, you, you look for it, right? Chemic, I think mentally I, I, I need it. It's, a, right. it's in my DNA, man. Right. right. And I'm sure you go through the same thing in the real estate world where you, you know, you're now, you've built a brand for yourself, for your last name, a culture, which I think is so important. And Again, I look at sports programs and I said, man, when you, when you go play at, 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 at a professional, for a professional team, there's a culture there. 
Now, whether you like or, or not like the culture, it's a whole different animal. But I learned that in college sports specifically that nobody was ever big in the program. So I said, how can I do that in business? How can I build a brand? Everybody's chasing. I didn't want to chase. I wanted to build. Right. You know, it's like, it's like you take over a team that's not very good and they tell you, Angel, run with it. You're like, okay, I'm going to build something. Like, go back to every winning coach. Coach K didn't inherit a winning Duke. He built that. I said, how do I build a winning team from scratch? That's what I fell in love with. I don't necessarily know that I'm in love with insurance. You get, to, that's like, I don't, you don't get, I saw paper. You know, I'm, I'm in love when you call me and say, Fern, thank you for helping my client. Thank you for saving me money or for the service or handling, you know, managing my claims. Um, but I fell in love with the building process to see, uh, to see employees grow, man, you know, and to give them what you wanted as a player that you sometimes didn't get. How many times did you feel like, man, like I'm putting in the work, I'm doing everything, but I'm not being recognized. And you're taking it and you're taking it and your spirit's breaking, but you're getting strong internally. Well, the way I looked at it is I went through all that. Not, not, do, not I didn't go through that pain in vain. I went through it because now I'm going to, everything I learned through the world of sports, I'm going to put it into business, but I'm also going to, I'm also going to give back to, I'm going to learn from, you know, I'm going to learn to help people, man, not make it about me. And when you do that, I just think that good things start to happen, you know? I, I agree 100%. And I, we see, I, I don't know, there's a secret sauce to it, you on, know? On, on that, I, I uh, completely run my business and my life and like, uh, like, a, like a game, it's like a sport. And um, I feel that when I jumped into this business, I had a huge advantage because of that. And, and really, my game, my hustle is very similar to baseball, right? Because this real estate, at the end of the day, how we get business is a game of failure, meaning that you're going to fail more than what you win. You know, you're not going to make 10 phone calls and get seven. Yes. It's yeah. just, it's not realistic. It's like you could do that for 10 at bats, but you know, after a hundred at bats, you're, brother, you're not going to hit 700. It's just <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> no one's ever done it. No one ever will. It's just not going to happen. So understanding that, understanding that you are going to strike out, that you're going to make errors, that you're going to do this, and how quick you can go from what happened there, how can I learn, and move on to the next one. Whoever's moving on to the next at bat, it's winning. You know? it's, it's winning. And, that, and that's the game here. It's like, no, don't call me anymore. Okay, no problem. On to the next. What's like, what, what's like one thing that like you carry consistently that you learn maybe on the field? in business, like what's like the one thing that really, you're like, man, that is from that. I learned that on, on, on the diamond or on the field. Like, is your, is it? I, there's many things and I'll, I'll start with structure. You know, my structure, people tell me, oh, you're so structured and you work out every morning. And to me it's a routine, I, I mean. So do I, <laughs> since you were a kid, I can't right? remember. So waking up at 5 a.m. and Sweating at 6 a.m. Is, is something that it comes natural to me. It doesn't even, it's not hard work for me anymore. And if I don't do it, it's like, if I feel weird. It's like, if I don't brush my teeth in the morning, that's weird. <laughs> you feel off, right? I feel off. So do I, man. So I texted you this morning. That, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, gotta, I gotta do something. Right. So that gets me going. That gets me going. Um, so many things. I mean, you know, being, being a team player, I get that from, from playing baseball. Um, Talking that, about that, I, I, I see now that you have your own team at Compass. Yes. How many players do you have right now? Eight. You got eight players? Yes. That's amazing. Well, a total of 10, but eight agents. Eight agents. Yes. That you are, are leading, constantly trying to, to give them feedback on the market, right. teaching them how to become better players and putting them in a position to to win the game. Correct. And I, is that as satisfying as setting the house for you? 100%. I love it. I love it. I, I love the, I love adding value to them so they can grow as well, you know? Because one thing is me growing and me doing things and that's, that's great, but having, having the power to help others grow as well is so satisfying. You know, it's a, it's a great feeling. And, you know, and from a business perspective, I think it's so important, Angel, because, you know, like 
JAG is obviously stands for, you know, Jones, Doug Jones, my business partner, Alvarez Gazatua. But, and it's, it's, it, it, it's the name of the company. But one of the things that, that, I, that pushes me every day is like, JAG cannot be above Fernie Doug and Lewis. That's not sustainable. For this, for this, for this company to grow to where I want to take it to and we want to take it to, it needs to have its core of people that can take it and run with it. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And and it's a difficult, challenging process to to find the right players um, that want to work as hard as you. And 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 again, I'll say this, especially in Miami, where we're in a very challenging city where I think I don't know if it's culturally, I, I have, I, I, I just know that some people aren't willing to, to work as hard as, 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 as they need to, to, to succeed. But I see you're building your, your brand. And I think you'd probably have the goal. Like I, you don't want a salary house. I, I, I want to, I want to build, you know, million dollar producers. I want to build producers that, that help us grow, man. Yeah. You know, that can take this. When one day we're in heaven, they like keep 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 it going, you know. And that's when I know. That's when I'm gonna know I built a company. Yes, one hundred percent. I love to walk into meetings I'm not invited to. Yes. When I walk in here and there's meetings going on that I wasn't invited to, I'm like I'm building a company. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like my team's working, and they don't even know how much more fire that gives me because they sometimes think that they work for me. I feel like I'm working for them right so it's, a, it's one of my favorite things and like it's selfish but like i love to walk in here and see meetings and i'm like i don't even know what's going on like and everybody's like we got it and i'm like so 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 going back to what you said about miami you know it is the environment i think it is a culture thing right it's like island living here it's like oh we'll do it tomorrow you know it'll be fine um living in new york I feel I, I feel like I grew up there. I really became a man. It was the first time that I wasn't playing baseball. I didn't have an agent or, you know, my college coach, you know, handing me things or whatever. Um, so it really got me to understand how, how things work in life, you know. And, and I feel that what you're creating here and the reason why this is happening is because it's trickling it's a trickle effect from what they see you doing you know your energy that you put into your passion that you put into your work and it's just it's the environment that you're creating here it's just everyone is wanting to do the same thing mm -hmm. and i feel that once people are doing that it's like oh this is this feels good right and it just it keeps adding fire to that so now new people that come in here there's just not just you now your team and everyone is in that same environment and it's the same thing that I'm trying to create here, you know, with, with the Nicholas group. And I see it's, that. I, I, I was going through your Instagram yesterday. I, I love that you had like a, was it a Thanksgiving thing with, all, with, your, with your team? It was, a, yeah, it was a ho the holiday yeah, uh, and, party. Yeah, but, it, but it, 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 it was intimate. Going back to culture, you're, trying, you're building your culture. We're, I'm trying to build my culture. And, 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 and I think people who, who are in, in the right phase of mind from a business perspective really have to understand that culture matters. But it's a word that's used very loosely. Right. You know, it's like I don't think really people understand the definition of culture. And it takes time. It does. It takes time for it's people to buy right. into the program and, and read the playbook and really say, okay, I'm 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 gonna buy I'm gonna buy, I'm committed. Right. Right? It's like when you're a hitter, it's like when you commit to your swing, commit. Like don't take off a swing. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting on a fastball and you see your pitch, turn on it. Exactly. And 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 the only way that people buy into culture is when they see it being lived by those who lead and own the company. And, and, and you understand, like it's, you can't talk and preach something and not live that, you know? 100%. And I think that we live in, in, you know, in a world right now of, of social media. And um, to me, sometimes like the internet is, I say the internet is winning because it, it's exposing real and it's exposing non-real and you see the bullshit and you see, and then you see, you see real. Uh, and I think that we're living in an era more than ever for whatever reason, Angel, I think that people are looking for real, man. Real is going to win. Always. Real, man. Like at the end of the day, real always wins. Always wins. And, and I lead with vulnerability. 
I, I'm not afraid to look at my team and say, damn, bro, I feel it today. You know, I, I think that we live in a world where everybody's just trying to like, things, things are always going great. And no, dude, I'm, I'm as human as you are. Like, I know that I own Jag and whatever box you've put me in, mm -hmm. I'm just, I bleed red. I get stressed out. Right. I'm married. I have, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have the same problems you have. Um, and I think leading with vulnerability is a huge strength nowadays, um, because it, it 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 shows your, your your transparency, and it gives people the trust, like saying, "Man, I can relate now," you know, big time. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Versus them isolating you and saying, "Dude, you know, angels always here, or Fernie's always here," and they don't understand. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm I feel just like you do. I, you know, I had to I had to take an extra deep breath today. I had to. I had to find it within. Right. Now, we're called to, to lead and, and to obviously too much was given, much is expected. Uh, but I think in, in, in this modern world that we're living in, it, it's just real is going to win. And, and, it, and, it's, and, and it's beautiful because it's giving an opportunity to those who had it, who had that real within. They just could never, you know, they can never show their game because the system was just not allowing them to. And you're seeing a shift happen. So it's interesting to see how, how corporations and companies move. And um, even in sports, man, uh, I have a, uh, really good friends with Raul Ibanez. And Ibanez and I always talk. And and great guy, dude. And we we're talking about the Dodgers. And he's like, dude, the Dodgers want real, man. They want they want to know, they want to know their, their players. We were, we were talking about that, talking about brand and culture. And I saw I collaborate. So I said, Raul, it, he asked me today, we were talking about baseball. Actually, it was like two days ago. And I said, you know, I think that I haven't coached college baseball. I have, I've never coached college baseball, but I haven't been in a baseball field in a long time. Other than now I'm coaching my son, I coach, which I coach Raul's son, and we're all coming together because we have kids now. But players and, and people are looking for leadership that people can relate to. And I'm like, man, you know, in the world that we're living in today, I think it's important for you to know your players, but truly know them. Because it's important to have that. I don't, I'm not saying that you have to be like tight boys, but man, like, I, I think that you should be able to walk into a locker room and give a guy, even though you're the head coach, give the guy a hug, give him a knock and be like, what's up, Angel, how's, how's everything going? Yes. That doesn't, that doesn't mean there isn't a boundary, mm -hmm. but like, Damn, coaches, he's just, he's one of us. Definitely. And knowing when a player's maybe not going through something and, and, and just having that, that relationship, man. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up because I've been that, I'm really passionate about human behaviors and different personality types and those kind of things, which I really got into it with personal training and then with real estate, you know, knowing how to deal with clients. But now is knowing how to deal with my team too, right? Because the way I talk to David may, be, may not be the same one I talk to Madison, you know? And I may, you know, you know, in baseball too, you know, some people will say, hey, you got to do this. Some people, you got to say, hey, you know, let's talk about this. How can you get better at that? What were you thinking about that day, you know? It's called knowing your players, man. Exactly, exactly. And what motivates you doesn't motivate me. And it's difficult. Because I'll, I'll tell you, like I have always said that I, I, the, the standard isn't flexible. The standard here is excellence. Yes. There is no, I'm not, that's not flexible. But how we achieve excellence can be somewhat different because I can't treat everybody the same because not everybody is the same. It's not. Mi abuela decía, todo mundo su propio mundo. I like that. It's true. It is true. I like that line. Okay. And what's going on in here, and me and you, we're all different. You know, we all have different fingerprints. Every human being, in the, that's, that's, that's an insane re, like, fact. We have all have, there isn't a human being that has the same fingerprint in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So we're all unique and different. And it's really knowing your players that I think is the, is the game changer from a culture perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get guys to buy into you. 100%. You mentioned earlier, you know, being relatable to your team. Mm -hmm. 
I think that is so important because sometimes they'll see me doing a presentation or handling some objections and things like that. And they, they wow, you know, you, you're, you're so good at this. And they perhaps they think that I was, I'm a natural or I was born like that. And, and it's not, <laughs> not at all. Uh, so I invite them to, to see my preparation. Because when they see that, they're like, oh, that's why, you know, because he practiced how to handle the objection about this home is too expensive, how to handle the objections for, of can you lower your commission, how to handle the, any objections, you know, how to talk about the market. I, I study it every morning. It's, like, it's the same thing. I, so I work out, I come home. The first thing I do on my computer is revise the market, what's going on, what's pending, what's not pending, how, how many properties in the market, how long are on the market. So when I, when I talk, I don't have to think about it. It's just like when you're on that bat, you you hit off the tee, you know, you've hit soft toss, you've hit batting practice, you, you've, you've reviewed what that guy has, change of, pra you know, his, his patterns. It's a lot easier now, you know? You're more confident. Than going there blinded. You're prepared. So so that's one thing that I've really let my, my team know. It's like, look, and actually, look, here's what I do. You can actually see me doing it. You can actually see myself practicing in the mirror what I'm going to say, you know? And they're like, oh, okay, that's why, you know? So, so you're, you're, if you're, I can do it, 100% you can do it. And you're just putting in the work. Right, right. And it comes from your passion. That's the that's one thing it, that you can't teach, Angel. That's it. You can't teach fire, man. <sighs> You, 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 I, 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 I it, that can become exhausting because I've also tried to pump guys up or, or, or your, your teammates up, but if, but if they don't want it, they don't want it. I think it's a mindset too, right? So, cause I'm, so, you, you know, sometimes you, you failed and then some people just fold and say, oh, you know what? I suck. You know, that's it. And some people say, you know what? I can overcome this. I can, I can get this. And, and that's, I feel like that's a difference, you know? The, the person that really understands that failing is all about learning, that's it. But if you take a fail, like a real fail, which is normal, like it, let, let's say you get your book kicked on a, on a deal. It's okay, if, man. If, if, you do, if you want to take it, you want to be, you want to have a self-pity party for, for 24 hours, go for it. On the forty, you know, on the next day, make sure you're ready to come back, and and you, you just got to learn from your mistakes, and you know that. And baseball taught us that, like you kind of have a short memory, man. That's like you can go four for four, dude. Uh, four for four, four doubles, have the game of your life, and then the next day you went over four. That over that four for four is like so gone in your brain, mm -hmm. but you got to have the ability to just like stay even keel, be humble, and know that the game is bigger than you stronger than you, faster than you. And I look at, I look at that at business. Like, I'm like, dude, you know what? The insurance market is, I got to stay on it because the market is bigger, faster, and stronger than I am. I can't control the market, but I can control how I prepare for the challenges the market is trying to throw at me, how I'm going to help my clients ahead of time, how I can forecast what's happening. You know, I think, I think great leaders have the ability, you know, to see way out ahead sometimes, you know? I think sometimes humbly, that's my, that's, my, that's my biggest gift and it's sometimes my curse because sometimes I'm so way out ahead that I've got to take a deep breath and say, wait, slow the whole thing down because I'm already way out there. Like I'm, I'm like 10 years ahead. I'm like, this is where this is going or, you know, and thank God I have amazing teammates that go out to me, you know, they kind of reel me back. But, having that ability and being able to anticipate. I mean, the whole time, how many times am I playing in the outfield and I'm just looking at a hitter swing and I know just by his swing, if he's a guy who's going to take the ball the other way, you know, and I'm shifting, you're playing shortstop, Angel. You're seeing things, all, you, all you're doing as an athlete pitch is Pitch by pitch, you got to adjust. You're, and you're anticipating constantly. So it's in our nature to do that. Right. You know, I struggle with people who just can't see 10 feet in front of them. I'm like, dude, you don't see it. What's, what's happening right here? But then you have to understand as a leader, like, no, man, they don't because they don't, that's not their game. Right, right. Listen, some people you know, have to be told, hey, there's a curveball, you know, move here, move there. And so people are going to just, 
be one step ahead and, and, and it's all about preparation, man. You know, and that's, 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 I think, I feel like that's the biggest difference is who is used to preparing and, and, and it's willing to take your time to prepare for every situation, you know? Um, yeah. And it's a, another word that's used kind of like, you know, all oh, knowing in preparation. I'm like, dude, but preparation really, like really preparing, like how prepared are you? What do you think preparation is? Just yesterday, I had a meeting, you know, we have a, 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 a team meeting every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. And I tell them, you know, I always use the sports analogy is how, how many times do you think, how many hours do you think an athlete spends in what they do? I mean, think about any sport, baseball, how many hours did you spend in the batting cage compared to how many hours did you actually spend hitting in the game? It's a lot. Hours. I mean, it's, it's, it's Right, I mean, close. it's it's crazy. Think about how many hours uh, of 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 practice LeBron James shooting that one shot, and then he went the game and you're like, oh, he's excellent. He's done that so many times. You know, it's just it was a reaction for him. Yeah, you know, but we only see that action. We don't see all the hours to come, all the pain, like, all the pain that come. You know, before that shot. So that that's it. I mean, you have to you have to prepare. Sometimes I go into a listening presentation that takes 15, 20 minutes, but I prepared two hours or more before that, just for that specific moment. I mean, forget all the books and everything that I've read about personality types and selling and the whole thing. But it's preparation. You have to put it on. You have you have to be prepared. And what does it say? If you if you say prepared, you never have to be. Yeah, you, you never have to get prepared, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> so it's a, it's a it's a routine of of always being prepared. All right. So as we start to close this out, a little bit about real estate. Where do you see the Miami market, man? I, I, I it's crazy. Oh boy, the Miami market is going to be fantastic. It is fantastic right now, and the way I see it is just going to keep going up. The where, north. where do you see it in five years? So let me just say that Northeasterners have been coming down already, but now it's going to be even more. All right. So now all the New Yorkers have moved down and telling all their friends, hey, Miami is fantastic. The weather is great. <laughs> Come down here. And by the way, and they're doing it. You're going to save so much money on taxes because you don't have state taxes here. Okay. The, the, the lifestyle, I did, the, I did a research compared to Manhattan, just Manhattan, the cost of living over there is 400% higher, okay? So we're talking about school, private schools, gas, where you eat, everything. I mean, it's the cost of living here is just, it's, it's less expensive. And people in Miami and, don't really, like people think oh, Miami's expensive. Like, Miami is not expensive in comparison to other parts of the country. Compared to the bigger cities, and Correct. to be fair, New York, Chicago, California. LA, okay. I mean, not even, not even close. We're, by far the least expensive and price of square footage to get something incredible in New York. You're talking about $400 a foot, $4,000 a foot here. You can get an, an amazing, an acre on the water, $2,000 a foot, you know, Gables Estates, get a community, the whole thing for 50% less for 50% less. So, you know, all of that combined is, uh, is, is making Miami a very attractive, Location for not just the northeasterners, but do you think all over do you think world. it's a long term play, Angel, or you, th or you think it's or, or you, it, it's obviously COVID has changed the world. Do you think do you think it's 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 here to stay? So let me just tell you my experience. When I first when this COVID thing hit, right, I, we were already in communication with all these New Yorkers specifically that wanted to come down here because of tax purposes and. And the lifestyle as well, but they were, you know, right there. COVID hit, and and it was now 100%. We want space. Our condo's fantastic, but we want be on the water. You know, we want an acre lot. So you were already focused. Oh yeah. Prior to COVID, you there had was a, some concentration of you were a little bit hyper focused in New York City with possible prospects. Or, or there was client. already a huge trend in the last three years. Has been a huge trend of really. New York has been our number and one this was feeder like the market. Final COVID is like okay. COVID, see, everyone okay. was on the fence, COVID pushed them over the fence. Got it. Right? So I said, okay, the market is crazy right now. Everyone's running away from the New York COVID craziness over there. 
Um, and it's going to be a trend. And it's not going to be a trend. This is the new Miami market. And it's just so attractive for everyone for many reasons. And what is, what is there not to love about Miami? You know, so it, it's, it's actually just going to keep going up and up and up. And it's not just the whales that are buying the 25 plus million dollar homes. It's also the two, the three and the $500,000 homes and, and, and so on. Um, so I, I see the Miami market just keep going higher and higher. And on top of that, everyone's taking advantage of the low interest rates too. So, um, that all of that combination is, is a great recipe for it's this crazy. market to go up. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to see our city literally just take off every single day, man. Yes. And then there's a party that's thinking, no, no, it'll stop. It'll stop. And I'm like, it ain't stopping. I'm reading it's the real not. deal this morning. I'm like, oh my God. And we see it here. I mean, you know, I think it's a, I think it's an amazing time to have a business in Miami. Um, and if you've been waiting for your shot, this is my, this is probably going to be your shot to grow, man. Yes. Um, this is obviously very challenging times. Like we, we were talking about earlier, but they're also amazing times. There's so much confusion out there, man, but you know what? I'm going to stay, I'm an optimist. I'm like, I know somehow through this painful process, there's going to be a blessing at the end. And I think that, uh, we're, we're living in an amazing city, amazing opportunities coming. I think, again, this is this is the time to uh, to be here, man. But uh, I wanted to thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, man. It's, it's a pleasure. It was awesome. Yes. Thank you. Big fan of what you're doing and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, man. And let's keep it going. It's just a little fun, a little passion, man. That's all it is. Yes. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Thank you. We can, we can shake hands. Shake hands. <laughs>